Should you give your child affirmations? Some find them cheesy, some find them trite, some worry that it's setting up a child for unrealistic expectations. I am a big believer that you need to affirm positive values and ideals to your child. It sets an imprint. I speak from personal experience. You can judge whether this was a good idea or not, but I well remember from my earliest days. I don't know when a child first really has memories from childhood, but certainly I couldn't have been more than about three years old. I distinctly remember my mother telling me virtually every day, Timmy, that's what she called me, you are the smartest boy in the whole world. You are the smartest boy in the whole universe. And then I would say, well, what about the world? She'd say, you are the smartest boy in the whole world. And I would say, well, what about the universe? And I, she would say, you are the smartest boy in the whole universe. And I think she also said, you're the most wonderful little boy in the whole world and the whole universe. This was repeated to me again and again and again and again for years. Now, is there the danger that something like this could create megalomania? <laughs> I don't know. Is there a danger that this could create extreme narcissism? I don't know, but all I can tell you is my entire life, I've had a certain level of confidence that I just don't see in a lot of other people. Now, as it turns out, and I didn't know this for decades, as it turns out, my mother was wrong. I wasn't literally the smartest boy in the whole world or the whole universe. <laughs> but by the time I'd figured it out, I already had so many successes under my belt as a, as a child. And, and folks, I've had a lot of failures. I'm, not that everything in my life has been perfect. And, you know, age 39, I was worth about $400 to my name. So I'm not trying to tell you that everything in my life was just extreme success. But I can tell you at an early age, hearing that from my mother, her telling me how much confidence she had in me and doing it in a repetitive way. It's not enough to say it once. It is the repetitive nature of affirmations that gives them power. There is a school of thought that says the brain cannot differentiate between fact and fiction if you hear it often enough. So if you hear something, it becomes true. For me, it certainly became true that I was the smartest little boy in the world and in the universe. And at some level, it helped. I'm not saying that's the, I had other advantages. I had two loving parents who were college educated and gave me everything I needed and were there for me. But it also helped. At an early age, I excelled in school, excelled in, in every range of academics, excelled in other areas. President of my student body in school, Eagle Scout at an early age, president of the Honor Society in junior high school. I say this, it sounds like I'm bragging, and for those of you joining us for the first time, believe me, I'm gonna talk about all sorts of failures and mess ups and screw ups I've had my whole life. I've probably made a lot more mistakes than you have. But when we're talking about just the power of these affirmations in a child's life, I do give a lot of credit to my, my father was supportive too, but specifically my mother was extraordinarily positive and very liberal in her administrations of daily affirmations, specifically telling me that I was you know, the most wonderful boy and the smartest boy in the whole universe. I don't think it created any long-term delusional negative impacts. I think I'm smart enough, but I don't think I'm literally the smartest person in the world. But it gave me the confidence and it made me believe I can do anything. I can set my sights on what I want to do and I can be what I want in my career. Have I had career setbacks and failure? Yeah, but I've also had a fabulous, fun, interesting career that's taken me to the four corners of the globe and, and taken me to every kind of castle and kingdom, working with presidents and prime ministers and Miss Universes and writing books and 
being on every kind of national TV show in the world. It's been a wonderful life, frankly, and I hope to have another 60 good years. I do think these positive affirmations as a small child had a big impact on the rest of my life. What I heard the first three, four, five years of my life, and I don't think they stopped at five, but certainly what I heard the first three, four, five years of my life, I think had a tremendous impact on what I did for the next half century in my life. So I want to ask you, are you using affirmations with your child? And if you're not consciously, are you certain you're not unconsciously giving affirmations to your child that might actually be negative? Did your parents give you affirmations? And what, and what were they? If so, what affirmations did you hear on a regular basis? Are you glad they did? Are you doing the same thing with your children? Or are you going the opposite way because you thought it was counterproductive? Certainly people who were beaten or hit or spanked as a kid quite often go the other way and never put a finger on their child. And vice versa sometimes. So sometimes people want to do the exact opposite of what their parents did. For me, I liked growing up in my family and I've tried to recreate that, or at least what I think were the good things of my own childhood for my daughter. So I give her a tremendous number of affirmations every single day. I had a lot of fun growing up going sledding with my family. I take my daughter sledding yesterday. I had a lot of fun growing up with my dad teaching me to play tennis. I teach my daughter to play tennis. What is it you're teaching your child specifically through affirmations? What are you trying to affirm to them? And are you doing it often enough for it to become a habit? Again, the real beauty of habit, the time-saving power of habit is through repetition or some other force, you're doing it and you don't even realize it. You don't have to use these executive thought processes to make a decision because you already have the habit. Your body's already doing it. Most of us don't have to make an executive decision. Am I, when I get up, am I gonna to go to the bathroom to use the toilet? If you need to go, you just go. It's, it's a habit. You don't typically have to make an executive decision. Hmm, am I going to brush my teeth today? Typically, you just do it at a set period of time. You have an identity as, I'm someone who just brushes my teeth a couple times a day. First thing when I get up, before I go to bed, maybe after lunch, it forms your identity. The affirmations your parents give you form your identity. Doesn't mean you can't overcome it, but you have to overcome what they form. The affirmations you tell your children form grooves in the brain. Those grooves in the brain turn into habits whether we realize it or not. What habits are so important to you that you want to affirm those habits and those mindsets with your own child? Let me know.